All right, my dears, let's look at the uh, uranium and thorium decay pathways that make radon. Um, I've linked to a periodic table on this assignment for you because while you don't necessarily need it, it is kind of nice to be able to see how you hop around on a periodic table depending on the type of decay that the um, isotope is undergoing. Um, in order to do this, I'm going to do, I'll do the first two with you so that you can see how it works. Um, basically, if we look down here, we have uranium-238, and uranium on the periodic table is right here. You can see it down at the bottom. It has 92 protons, and um, it has varying number of neutrons depending on the stability of the isotope. Um, this uranium will sneak into uh, zircon, that is um, a mineral in quartz and granite, um, which is how it ended up here in the Willamette Valley from the Missoula floods from the Rocky Mountains. Um, so if you look at the mass, you see that um, this uranium isotope has uh, 238 as its mass. So it has 92 protons, and then if you subtract, you can figure out how many neutrons it has. In this case, we don't super duper care how many neutrons it has. We just want to know that the uranium goes from 238 to um, 234. So we know then that we have to add um, something, we're losing something that has a mass of four over here because um, 234 plus four has to equal this 238. So this has to be true. We have to do the conservation of mass. That is always a thing. Conservation of mass is a thing, has to be done. So we're conserving mass. Now, if we know that something has four, the other thing that we can look at here Uranium, if you look on the periodic table, you notice, I kind of drew on it, didn't I? Um, you can see over here that uranium has 92 protons. Okay, so we have 92 protons to start with. And then if you look and see in this reaction, we go from something with 92 protons to this thorium. If you look on the periodic table, the thorium has 90 protons. So 92 protons is what we started with. We ended up with something that had 90 protons. And so we must have emitted, we lost two protons somewhere. So you know now that the um, particle that you lost, even though it's not written here, had two protons. And you can take now this proton, these numbers of protons here, this two protons, and that, remember, this is your number of protons, which is the atomic number. And the atomic number, remember, is on the periodic table. So now you can go back and look at the periodic table, and you can see that um, if it has two protons, it is helium. So the identity it is helium because it has two protons. So now we can go back. Sorry if you're getting nauseous. And we know that this isotope that we kicked out is a helium nucleus. Um, so you can either write it 4,2 helium, or um, if you prefer, you can write it um, as an alpha particle. You see that if it has a mass of four, two protons, the identity is helium. It's an alpha particle. It's a big old, big old piece of matter that came off. So this is an alpha particle. Wow, I didn't spell that right, did I? I really am bad at spelling. Particle. There we go. Okay, um, or you can just write alpha either way. This is the Greek symbol for alpha. So the first reaction, you can see that you have a mass of 238. Your mass drops down to 234, which makes you know that you have, uh, you're losing four pieces of mass. And because of the periodic table, so you have to use the periodic table here, you can see that uranium has two, um, Protons. We know from looking at the periodic table that thorium has 90 protons, and so we can then figure out that we lost two protons. So that's how we do that. And then that gets us on the periodic table. We went from uranium, we went down here and made thorium. So we lost two protons in alpha decay, and we made um, thorium. Now, the thorium, if you look here, Oh, that's the same. No, it's not. So the thorium here, it now has a mass of 234. 
and it undergoes a decay that produces something that has um, that also has a mass of 234. So we did not lose any mass, um, but my identity changed. I changed this change from thorium to polonium. So we can see, looking at the periodic table, we went from thorium here to polonium, which is, oh wait, did I make a mistake? You know what, you guys, I made a mistake. That's not PO, it's PA. Is that right? Shoot. All right, sorry, I had a little typo on my um, paper. It was, I was confused. I was writing it down wrong, guys. I did it, I did that. Okay, so um, we were looking at the thorium here and we can see that the thorium um, breaks down and it does not break down into polonium because polonium is way up here and um, thorium is clear down here and there's no decay that can be done to go from, <laughs> there's no decay that can be done that can take you from um, 90 to 84. That's not a thing. So um, it, I was supposed to put in there um, protactinium, which, or, which I, pro, protectinium, yep, that's what it's called. Um, the PA, I didn't do that right, that was my bad. Um, so um, if you look at thorium going to protectinium right here, um, you can see that the mass number doesn't change, so you know you're emitting a particle that doesn't have any mass, but the identity of the element changed, so that means you know that something happened to your protons. So um, if you look here, you can see, let me erase my messy periodic table, you can see that thorium is 90 and protactinium is 91. So something happened to give us an extra proton. So we have one proton here um, that is, oh, I'm sorry, that's not being emitted. The proton is, um, is hanging out in, it. the thorium, changes and ends up with an extra proton in its nucleus. And then what's being emitted here, whatever it is, doesn't have any mass. Um, beta decay is kind of tricky. Let's get some space here. Um, this, what, what's happening here is we've, we're emitting a beta particle. So you have um, something that has a charge of negative one and it's an electron, or you can write um, beta decay. And again, that weird B symbol is just the Greek letter um, beta. So what happens in beta decay is that you've got, beta decay is that a neutron in the nucleus, um, I'm gonna go ahead and write this all out for those of you who prefer writing. A um, neutron in the nucleus changes into a proton and an electron is emitted. So for those of you who like words, that's the explanation of beta decay in words. Um, in symbols, for those of you who prefer symbols, which I definitely do, um, this is the symbol for a neutron. So a neutron undergoes a reaction and becomes a proton and an electron. And what happens here, so this neutron is in the nucleus. It's an unstable nucleus. It undergoes beta decay. The neutron is in the nucleus, the proton remains in the nucleus, and then this electron, this electron is emitted. So it's kicked out of the nucleus. So basically, if you think about a neutron as a proton and an electron bonded together, what happens here is that the electron gets booted out. The neutron breaks down and um, falls apart and becomes a proton with about the same mass as the nucleus. and um, or sorry, about the same mass as the neutron. Protons and neutrons have nearly identical masses. Um, and then this electron is emitted. So that's what's happening in this beta decay. Um, so you end up going um, on the periodic table, you go from thorium up to protactinium, and then um, you're keeping an extra proton in your nucleus, in the nucleus of your protactinium, and an electron is emitted. So that's what's going on there. Um, but you, anytime you see the mass staying the same, you know that you're going to have, ah, that's not what I want, you know that you have beta decay. So you can look, you can look carefully and figure this piece out. Um, I think that will give you everything that you need. This is just a little bit of um, 
a little bit of an opportunity to spend some good quality time with your trusty old periodic table and um, looking very carefully at the alpha and beta decay. Um, this information can definitely go into your uh, model checklist and um, be aware that this last piece, this last reaction is the one that we're super concerned about. And um, a question that you might wanna answer for your checklist is why? Why are we concerned about this reaction? So why is it that the decay of radon going to polonium is a problem? What is problematic about that? So there you go, that's that, uh, good luck. All right, there was one last thing that I wanted to point out um, during the video, I just watched it and realized that I forgot to point out the fact that in beta decay, when you have your neutron that has no mass or that has um, no charge and it breaks down into a proton and an electron, you can see that the, the charges stay the same. So you have zero is equal to a plus, plus a minus, and that the math of the charges still works. So your charges on each side of the equation, so your charges on the reactant side is zero, and your charge on the um, product side is still zero. So your charges are still balanced. And um, some of you may have picked up on that as I was talking through, um, but these, these charges up here in chemical equations will always be balanced. You will have the same charge on your, um, with your reactants as you have with your products. That's another super important thing of chemistry. We like things to stay balanced.